Wall Street veteran Bernard Madoff has been arrested and charged with running a $50 billion Ponzi scheme. Congress wants to know what caused the Enron meltdown. Now, well, the collective rage currently is focused on Wilcom. Tyco CEO Dennis Kozlowski was convicted of looting hundreds of millions of dollars. This yeah. is one of the biggest fraud cases ever. Their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Find out more on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. On the season premiere of White Collars, Red Hands, we'd like to salute those who have made the ultimate sacrifice to give us the freedom to make this podcast today. In the last 100 years, over 10,000 U.S. military members have lost limbs for our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Today, we are honoring one of those service members on our podcast, Brian Colfidge. Brian Colfidge, a true American hero and triple amputee turned internet troll turned con artist. What did he do? How did he do it? Find out on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. Welcome back to a new season of White Collars, Red hands. I bet you didn't have that opening on your bingo card. That Probably we were gonna, not. No, that we were no, gonna play no, no. That song. What even is the name of that song? The it's Star just a, Spangled Banner. Of course it is. What are you talking about? I knew that. The national anthem. Hey, hey, come on! I'm not. I'm not. It's not on a lot of. It's not on any of my Spotify playlists. You know. Do you even know the words? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is America. And there are amber waves of grain. Wrong song. Nope. That's right. That's America the Beautiful. America is beautiful. You're so right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are parts of America that are very beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, welcome back to another season of White Collars, Red Hands. I'm Kashan. And I'm Nina. What season are we on, Kashan? This season 15, Nina. Holy moly. 15. That's one five. All right. It is. We, if seasons were years, we could have our driver's permit. We could. Um, we do have a little bit of an update for you before we get this episode going. Kashan, want to tell the people our update? All right. So you might have uh, seen any news ever for the past <laughs> half a year or longer, or maybe you listened to our episode on Sam Bankman Freed, the previous uh, CEO of FTX and founder. They did a bunch of really not cool things. You can go listen to the episode if you want to hear more. But he just received his sentence last week. And they really slapped the book on him. Threw the book in him. They hit him with a heavy sentence. 20, they did. 25 years is, is what he got. I've, Oof. I have already seen articles, though, that kind of say the same thing we always say. Where it's like, okay, he got 25 years, but how much of it is he going to serve? Oh, he's not going to serve 25. Almost he, definitely not. Do you think but, he'll serve 10? I feel like it's really hard to get out of a 25-year sentence with just 10. I I haven't really read into the sentencing in depth, so I don't know if there's like a minimum. Um, usually there is. Like you can only – especially it also depends on the state you're in, right? Like the, the sentence you get, sometimes you have to serve like a minimum percentage of that mm. before you're eligible uh, for parole, which I just learned. Did you know this? That in Illinois, where we're from – Everyone at home. There's no parole. I didn't know that. Parole's not a thing here. Oh. You, you can't get paroled early. You can't get out of prison early. Hmm. So hmm. for anything. Hmm. So like drug I don't crimes, think I like that. <laughs> I don't think I like it either. I heard that. I was like, I that's like that. wild. Yeah, that is crazy. That's not good. No. So anyway. No, that's not good at all. Soapbox away. Hmm. Well... Pull that soapbox back out because you're going to want to stand on it for this episode. Salute. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to be talking about Brian Colfidge. Now, Brian Colfidge was an American who felt like it was his duty to perfect to protect his nation. He enlisted in the U.S. Air Force in 2001. That's the hard one to get into. Yes. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I think it is, actually. Um, 
In 2004, he was stationed in Kuwait, and he then volunteered to go to the Ballad Air Base in Iraq. Um, on September 11th, 2004, it's a bad day, not only in our nation's history, but also for Colvidge. Colvidge was sleeping in a tent, and then he got up to go to the gym before he was assigned to his duties for the day. He got up, grabbed water, and headed out of his tent. While en route to the gym, a missile exploded three feet in front of him, and he sustained horrible sustained horrible injuries from the explosion i'm just going to warn you the next part is graphic i'm going to give you a minute to turn to fast forward a few seconds if you need it all right so colfidge actually thought he was dreaming because he had been asleep not long before that but he kind of came to he looked down and saw that his hand was barely hanging on his arm he was laying face down on the ground and several soldiers ran over to turn him over when they turned him over colfidge sat up to look at his legs one of the soldier one of the other soldiers covered his eyes and told him not to look so colfidge knew that that was it was going to be bad Woof. Yeah, that is, that's shock. <laughs> yeah. I will say the, the dream feeling. Oh, he was 100% in shock because he said that he did not start feeling pain until he got into the ambulance. Like he didn't feel anything and then they put him in the ambulance and then like obviously he was in so much pain he could, like I can't even imagine being in that much pain. Yeah. And he said he was like screaming and cussing out everybody on the ambulance to like give him pain medicine and I don't, I don't know if they didn't have it. I don't know if they didn't even know what to do with him, but I he mean, was, yeah. it was bad. The body's an incredible thing though, that it can, uh, it can not feel pain like that for a while. Yeah. 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 And I don't know actually, and I'm sure he doesn't actually know how long it was from like the explosion to when he got to the hospital, but Colfidge was taken to the hot, to a hospital, um, once they got to the hospital, Colfidge remembers the horrified look on doctors' faces, and he does say that that was, like, extremely unsettling when he got, like, he, he, I watched an interview, and he was like, the people who are supposed to be, like, taking care of you and who are supposed to be, like, used to this kind of stuff, to have them have that look on their face is very scary because they were like, what the fuck do we do with this? Um, no, that's wild. It's like being in a dentist's office, and they go, like, ugh. Yeah, and you're like, oh you're like, no. You <laughs> what, go to the, do you, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, what does like, that mean? You like go to the gynecologist, and they're like, oh my, like that's. Yeah, they pull out that they pull out that comical like a uh, like a uh, chip clip, and they put it on their nose. And they're like, <laughs> all right, time to go. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what a gynecologist is like. Yeah, they. I clip- haven't. I haven't been yet. Every time I go, they clip their nose. Anyways, um, after he got to the hospital, he passed out, and when he woke up, he was back in America. Um, so I have no idea how long he was passed out. They probably kept him sedated. Oh, I'm is what I would say. Once sure. once he went down there, like keep this man asleep. Yeah, Colfidge lost a portion of his right arm and both of his legs in the explosion, making him a triple amputee. Colfidge received a Purple Heart for his service and sacrifice over in Iraq. Now, how could an American hero be featured on this podcast? scamming people it's not very red white and blue of him where's the patriotism you'll find out that is a really rough setup for us to talk about the crimes committed by this man is this very very terrible and human story about him losing three of his limbs but i gotta say it like this is such an important part of his story though oh yeah no you can't skip it no you cannot skip this part however you can be like oh by the way at the end of the episode by the way he didn't have his legs oh yeah by the way he's a triple amputee um he has a really cool prosthetic arm though it like looks like a hand and then because because he he lost like from here up I Fore- think, oh. mid-forearm up. Yeah, like about... Well, you can't see... Mid-forearm like, to yeah. the hand, I Yeah, guess he say. lost yeah. his hand. But because, like, he still has a large... Like, beyond the elbow. Yeah. He, so, like, this thing, like, fits over his hand... Or over his arm, the prosthetic. And then it looks like a hand. Not a very realistic hand, but it's shaped like a hand. And then when he moves his arm, the hand open and closes. Oh, yeah, they do that now. So, so he got the he got the Skywalker special, is what you're yes, saying. Yes, he did. He got the, he got the right at the the mid yes, forearm. Yes, yes, God. Yes, that, yeah. But I have to include all of the like his heroicness, his amputeeness, because 
It gives you a soft spot for him. And that's how he was able to get away with all this stuff is because he was just seen as this amazing American hero. And he ended up doing a lot of bad stuff. So we'll talk about it. After spending an entire year in the hospital, Colfitch took a civilian job at the Davis Monthan Air Force Base. Um, he ended up enrolling in college and went to the University of Arizona and graduated from the School of Architecture in 2014. Go Wildcats. I think he wanted to make himself new limbs. Anyways, um, Colfitch. Out of, out of what? Uh, architecture. Out of building? He wanted to make a prosthetic arm out of a building? Maybe he was going to take the steel beams. That'd be dope. Hey, that would be kind of cool if you became an amputee, double on the legs, and then you got like stilts, and then you were super tall. And if they were made out of steel beams, because mm -hmm. as we all know, jet fuel can't melt them. So at least you're there protected you go. for one more thing. One more thing. Right? Yeah. Colvidge, obviously, like I said, seen as a national hero, and he was invited by Obama to, intend, to attend the State of the Union address in 2012. He was also a motivational speaker. And I mean, yeah, the, I would be motivated or at least intrigued listening to him speak. Now, our story could end there. Colfidge could build things with his good arm and he could have lived a happy life. But that's not where our story ends. In 2013, I just have to assume that Colfidge got bored. He got bored and he started spreading conspiracy theories on social media. He became a right wing activist and started his own fake news sites. By 2015, Colfidge was associated with Freedom Daily, Keep America First, Right Wing News, Trump Republic, and America and Veteran AF. That's a lot to keep track of. Yeah, I think so. Basically, Freedom Daily was his like that was his site, uh -huh. and then I think he was just like affiliated with all these other sites. But he had an insane online presence. So insane. Is it just like? QAnon stuff? Or? Yeah, basically. Okay. When you said conspiracy theories, I thought you were going to pull out that he was the one behind the moon isn't real.org. No. He's not that one. Which, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, it's not real, so. They make some poignant points on the moon isn't real.org. Well, I mean, you know, the wind isn't. So. I mean, the the American flag is billowing on the moon and there wouldn't be any wind, so. Uh, Yeah. It was Photoshop. It was 1960s Photoshop. Well, they did okay. it in a studio. Uh, yeah, they had to take the pictures, though, right? And then they shopped the photos, hence Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know your American history. Uh, uh, I think I know it more than you, it seems like. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Colvidge, he denied owning Freedom Daily, but there is proof that his home address was listed as the company's business address. Um, he also began writing articles for The Blaze, which is is a site that I have heard of. The rest of them is I had it, not heard of. Isn't that that pizza store? That pizza <laughs> restaurant? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. So he ran Freedom Daily and some, and some a sort pizza of pizza store. blog, I guess? He did. He okay, did. cool. He does. I forgot to include it in the outline, but I'll bring it up. But I, I will bring it up later. He um, he does end up running his own coffee business. What a multi, what a multi talented what, entrepreneur this guy is. What a multifaceted guy. He can really do it all. He is. Um, so, as you can assume, all of these websites, they're conspiracy theories. They're just a bunch of clickbait, they spread fake news. You know, none of it's real. But being in this business was very profitable for Colfidge, who alleged in text messages that he was making $200,000 a month from these websites. That's not completely confirmed, but he had a huge online presence. Presence, I'm sure he was getting a lot of ad money. Um, was he selling supplements on the side too? Probably. Like Alex Jones? Oh, probably. I forgot about that guy. That's, that's everyone's thing. If you want to be a huckster, sell supplements on your site. Yeah. Freedom supplements Freedom. Made, made from pure bald eagle extract without killing them because they're endangered in the symbol of America. <laughs> so some of Colfidge's Facebook news pages were taken down when the company was doing a spam purge and claimed that his accounts were just posting ad farm links, which they were. They were just, that's all they were. Um, and then he was actually technically banned from Facebook. However, there is a, I'm going to air quote, fan page. Um, that operates under his name that seven people run. So 
in technicality, he isn't the one posting, but I don't actually believe that. I do think it's him. So it's like seven people in a trench coat pretending to be Brian Colfage? Yes, yes. Interesting. Which is crazy because they all don't have legs. Because <laughs> he can't. Be, well, you can you just put the wheelchair at the bottom of the trench coat. Ah, right? yeah, you could. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, could. come on. You could. Um, so on all of his platforms, he had about 700,000 followers. So he had a huge reach. He also had an insane, he was able to get like these he was able to get people's emails. I don't really know how he was able to do it, but it was said that like he had email chains with thousands and thousands and thousands of emails that he actually ended up selling to a Republican um, politician in Kansas to like have them spread, like email their propaganda out to everybody. But well, because if you send this one prayer to 10 people and they send that one prayer to 10, 10 people, people. And they send that one prayer to 10 people, then eventually God will save the entire world. He will. Right? He will. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Colvin actually really used his social media in an evil sense. He would use it to personally attack people and spread lies about them. He would post fake articles. And then when people would comment on his post, he would expose them for things that they didn't do. And truthfully, he would ruin their lives. Like there was one... He posted an article like not, totally not about him and a woman commented on it and he was like, she hates veterans, like expose her. And like it got like 12,000 shares and hundreds and thousands of likes. Oh, shit. And she was like, I talked, I just like commented that like it was, I think like the post was like, like a baby had cancer and she was like praying for you. And he was like, this bitch hates veterans. Like, it didn't actually make sense. Like, none of this makes sense. Like, this whole trolling thing that he did doesn't make any sense to me. So he was just, like, send his dog packs after people for doing nothing? Like, not, Literally, even, not even disagreeing with them? Some, he would do that, too. Okay. But, if, but for not disagreeing with him as well. Just for, like, being there. How dare you post on my post? Uh-huh. How dare this, you? Dox this person. This person doesn't like the new Beyonce album. Get her ass. Get her. Get her. <laughs> He and his followers would put people on blast and make up crazy lies about them. It would get so out of hand that their addresses and phone numbers would get posted and then they would get harassed. Cole Fitz's followers found a victim's father's grave and threatened to dig him up and piss on his grave. It got really... Um, you don't... You realize you don't have to dig them up to piss off. Yeah, the, I know. The grave They're goes not, all the I way to the say, top. It goes all, you don't have to dig deeper. The grave is at the surface level. Just piss there. Right. You're but adding more. It won't go six feet down. You're adding more work for yourself. It will eventually, maybe. Yeah. I, I'm just saying. Come on, guys. Yeah. I mean, they're not smart. I'm just Think saying. Think before you speak. They would threaten to rape, kill, and destroy people's lives. Colfitch even went as far as to contact one woman's imply, employer, pressuring them to fire her. And the stress was so intense that she ended up in the hospital because of the stress. Um, so I'm just, you know, this man was seen as a hero in so many people's eyes. But after everything I just told you, he kind of, he sucks. He sucks. Um, and he's going to suck even more because in December of 2018, Colfitch, Steve Bannon who is Trump's former senior advisor. And I'm pretty sure in prison now? Mm -mm. He's not? He got pardoned. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk more about that later. Timothy Shea and Andrew, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Badolato. Badolato. I like Badolato. Badolato. It sounds funny to me. Um, they started a GoFundMe to help Donald Trump in the effort to build a wall along the Mexican border. Yeah, so, that's what a multi-billionaire needs, a GoFundMe. Uh-huh. Exactly. Colfitch said that he made the GoFundMe to, quote, because... Quote, I was frustrated with our political leaders and what they were doing, their broken promises and the dragging and dragging things on. I thought having the GoFundMe would allow people to come together on the Internet to show their support for what they wanted. Raising this kind of money shows how important this is and that people want to support it. 
Now, you might be wondering why the group used a GoFundMe in the first place. Well, Colfish had used GoFundMe numerous times over the years to raise money, including a time that he raised $73,000 to, quote, stop social media censorship after he got kicked off of Facebook. He was also really good. Like I said earlier, he was really, really good at collecting emails, and he had an email list of thousands and thousands of people um, which is why his stupid websites and GoFundMes were so successful because he would just send all this shit out to people in their emails. Now, this GoFundMe, same thing. Also, very successful. They raised about $9 million in three days. Huh. Damn, that's got to be one of the most successful GoFundMes mm-hmm. of all time, right? Yeah. $9 million? Mm-hmm. In three days. That's crazy. It is crazy. Um, their goal was to raise $1 billion, which was the largest amount in GoFundMe history. And just remember, they took like 15% of that. <laughs> so, so how much one, money would they be losing? Out of $1 billion, that's $150 million. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's 15%. Oh, damn. That's great for GoFundMe. Yeah, that's why GoFundMe would probably be like, okay. You can They're do like, that. you go right ahead. You make however much money you want, big boy. Mm-hmm. Just remember, just remember our cut. <laughs> because of the success of the GoFundMe, they decided to make We Build the Wall. That was what their campaign was called, We Build the Wall. They decided to make We Build the Wall a nonprofit. Now, the plan was to have a wall between the U.S. and Mexico constructed on private landowners' properties that bordered Mexico. So they weren't going to use, like, because obviously, like, this is U.S. soil. You don't, like, you can't just build. They were going to contact these private landowners and be like, hey, can we build the wall on your property? Sounds like you might need a lot more than $1 billion. Yeah. Honestly, (laughs) for, like, the entirety of the U.S.-Mexico border, that was their goal? I don't know if it was, I think it was 100 miles. It was going to pay for 100 miles of wall. Okay. I think I might say that later, but yeah, it was, I think okay. their pl- original so, plan was 100 so miles. So like a wall big enough that you could still go around it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Dumb. Brought to you by the people that think they need to dig, dig into the grave to piss them. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And you know what? They did build some of the wall. They built about a mile long of bollard fence, which is like a tall fence. So it's pretty tall and it's, um, I don't even know. I was going to say it's made out of steel, but I couldn't figure out what the hell it was made out of. But it Is was, that the one with the slats in it? Yes. That they were making the joke like, you could just go through the slats? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Uh, but they built, built a mile of it and it cost about $6 million. And they ended up raising a total of $25 million while this was running and for, and they raised that twenty five million from five hundred thousand donors. Oh, and this was what would have built twenty five million dollars would have built a hundred miles of fencing. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. So I don't know how much they were actually trying to make. Here's the thing. As you're gonna find out, I'm gonna spoil it right now. None of this is real. Uh-huh. So I don't think they ever said how much they were gonna build. They just said I think we're, we're gonna, gonna build, build a, a wall. wall. We're gonna build a wall. On the Texas-Mexico border. Which? And people were like, okay. Here's money. They had enough for 100 miles, but they didn't do it. The nonprofit was supposed to build more fence slash wall, whatever you want to call it, on private land, but they never did. The group got more, a lot of notoriety, though, a lot of praise. Donald Trump Jr. loved them, and he um, said that they were, quote, what capitalism was all about. So you make the common man pay for your dumb, shitty ideas because they're so nationalistic that they're blind. Hell yeah. Hoorah. God, I fucking love this country. I fucking love this country. Now, remember when we talked about how Colfidge would use the internet for evil instead of good? Building the wall was an example of this there was a priest who had opposition to the wall being built and the wall would have gone through his land if things had gone their way when he didn't show support for the wall colfidge took to social media and claimed that the man was human trafficking which is wild to claim that somebody is doing that when they're not um he also (laughs) 
He also had beef with the National Butterfly Center. <laughs> me too. You know, me too. I fucking hate those guys. Aww. Oh, butterflies, huh? Oh, you think those are so cool? Fucking nerds. Nerds. Um, the National Butterfly Center was near where his border fence was and he made about 30 tweets about the butterfly center in 2019 and also blamed them for human trafficking and called them left wing thugs with a sham butterfly agenda <laughs> uh that's i gotta get that on a t-shirt that's just gonna say left wing thug with a sham butterfly agenda on it that's great <laughs> We should make those our new merch. Do it with a little butterfly at the yeah. top and the bottom. Yes, I I picture it now. Yes, it would look great. Left wing thugs with a sham butterfly. We should find the tweet. <laughs> we should find the tweet and print it on a shirt because that's what he tweeted. Oh my god, so funny, ridiculous. I like how he's accusing them not of only being like okay, they're like they're like left wing like. Which is funny like, that they're left wing like, butterfly. Yeah, like activists or whatever. But he's also saying that the whole butterfly thing is a lie. <laughs> they're like, no, it's a front. You guys don't understand. They keep a bunch of butterflies to hide all of the sex trafficking they're doing. There's really, they're not butterflies. They're moths. They're hiding the people in just mounds of butterflies. You guys don't he understand. He walks in. He walks in. He's like, these are people in butterfly costumes. <laughs> This is all, everything here is a lie. <laughs> These are fake butterflies. That's not a monarch. That's hilarious. Instead of Reagan making the birds fake, the right wing equivalent is the butterflies are fake. <laughs> the butterflies. They're created by sex traffickers. <laughs> oh my God. There was also another company that was like having, he was like trying to build, the was trying to get like approval to build through this one section. And there was a company that had to like give approval. And um, it was taking longer than he wanted it to and like so then like he also went on social media for that one and was like burn the company down blow up their stuff like blah blah blah, blah. he's insane when colfidge started we build the wall he stood firm on the fact that none of the founders were taking any salary from the organization and that every penny was going to the construction of the wall he claimed this on Twitter. He claimed it on top shows, talk shows. You name it, he was spouting it off. Like, nope, we're not taking any money. Colfidge told the public that We Build the Wall was a volunteer organization that 100% of the funds raised will be used for the execution of our mission and purpose. However, it became clear that this maybe wasn't the case. One indication that the money was being misallocated was via his wife's social media. Ashley Colfidge, who looks exactly how you think she'd look. Small, blonde, wears a camo, like, Carhartt hat. She probably has one. Okay. But, yeah, you, yeah, small, fit, bleach blonde. She looks like Tommy Lahren. Yeah. She looks like, honestly, she looks like Walmart Tommy Lahren, but, yeah. She looks like every Fox News host. Yes. Female Fox News yes. host. Yes, like, when I, like, I don't know what's up with you guys and those, that bleach blonde hair, but. And they are, they're always, like, really young, and you're like, why are your female anchors, like, 22? And all They your, barely and got your, out of college. Your male anchors are, like, 60. It looks like a, it looks because like a Hollywood creepy. relationship. Because it is. It is. Um, fun fact, they met at Chili's. Of course they did. Yeah. What are you talking about? She, he was like, oh, I feel God in this Chili's tonight. Like they were they were hanging out at the bar in Chili's? No, she was a waitress. Pick it. Her uh, socials. She would use her socials to gain notoriety to promote her modeling career. That is what she said. So she would take videos in their boat, their $100,000 Range Rover, their upgraded pool, their newly decorated house. Etc. And I just want to say that the boat was named the Warfighter. You you could have at least made it the Warf Fighter, right? Because then it would have been a pun. No, 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 no. The Warf Fighter. This isn't a joke, Kashan. It should be. It's a boat name. Our, don't, don't take this seriously. Our pontoon boat is American AF, bro. She has a lot of pictures on Instagram of her like holding the American flag in a bikini. <laughs> Okay. Or, like, it, like, wrapped around her. Oh, okay. She claims that it was her money that bought the Range Rover. 
mm -mm. that was donor's money. What actually happened was, although Colfitch said he wasn't taking any salary, he actually took on a $100,000 lump sum and then was being paid $20,000 Per month. Oh, great. so it's not a it's not a salary per se. It's it's just a monthly uh, twenty thousand dollars stipend with a hundred thousand dollars signing bonus. Yes, it's not a not really a salary. No, right? I wouldn't call it that. It's it's regular it's a regular payment. Yes, uh, for running it, but mm -hmm. yeah, not a not a salary. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely no. not. No. Absolutely not. In total, Colfage took. $350,000 for personal use. Steve Bannon actually took $1 million from We Build the Wall. So there's that. Um, obviously, these, what would you call it? A stipend? Yeah, month, these, monthly stipends. These monthly stipends would never be disclosed, but they were hiding them in shell corporations. The men would route their payments through Nonprofit One, which was a shell company under Tim Shea's control. Yeah, Nonprofit One. Great. Not to be confused with Nonprofit Two. Which is a totally legit business. Totally legitimate. <laughs> yeah. Should not be worried. Um, they would also they would do this with fake invoices and fake vendor agreements or uh, vendor arrangements. They were using this money, like I said, for a bunch of different stuff to live a lavish lifestyle. We lavish lifestyle is a phrase we use often here, you know. So, like I said, they bought the boat, they bought the Range Rover, they bought they got cosmetic surgeries, they bought jewelry, they did pay off their taxes and some credit card debt. So they weren't completely irresponsible, but this was with donor money. In October 2019, the men learned that they could be under investigation, so they stopped some of those monthly stipends. So they, they knew it was wrong, too. Oh, that's yeah. The, that's the other thing. They also, now of course they knew it was wrong. They also took it a step further and started using encrypted messaging apps to hide what they were doing. But it didn't work. On August 20th, 2020, Colfidge, Steve Bannon, Andrew Badalotto and Timothy Shea were all indicted for defrauding donors. It was shown that they had funneled money from their nonprofit for their own personal gain. Now, Steve Bannon got lucky and he was pardoned by Donald Trump, but the rest of the quartet was shit out of luck. Rough. Should have been yeah. better friends with the president. Yep. Maybe he would have pardoned you. They've got no friends in high places. Just Steve. Yeah, they needed some, I don't know. Yeah, way to leave your boys behind, Steve, by the way. Yeah, you're like, you're super like, you're lame. You're in with them and you're like, hey, deuces, enjoy mm. the rest of your prison stay, dickheads. It's like in Goodfellas, when he rats them all out and goes into the witness protection program and they all go to jail. It's lame. exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Many people actually question why Donald Trump pardoned Steve Bannon because Bannon profited off of what Trump's main running ticket was and it's like essentially he made a joke of Trump and what he was trying to do. And also it was super clear that Bannon was linked to this. It actually made no sense not to pardon all four of them so that the trial wouldn't have gone forward. Like people have said they, he should have pardoned them all or should have pardoned none of them. It didn't make sense to only pardon Bannon, but, but Bannon was his friend. True. I mean, he was a senior advisor. So there so, you go. There you go. We'll look no further. In May 2021, Colfidge was also indicted in Florida for fraud and filing false tax returns. How patriotic of him. Um, he was living in Florida at this time, so that's why he got in trouble in Florida. Um, Colfidge claimed to have made $63,000 on his tax returns when he had had $350,000 deposited into his bank account from We Build the Wall, which also, every time you deposit ten thousand dollars or more into your bank account the irs gets notified yeah they have to fill out a form the bank does yeah so dumb that's dumb that mean but you have to sign that form too so yeah like, he should have known that <laughs> right yeah it's not a secret yeah but okay yeah i can't i can't i can't make sense of it on April 23rd, I'm sorry, on April 21st, 2021, Colfidge pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit fraud, wire fraud 
and one count of some conspiracy to commit money laundering and two counts of filing a false tax return. On April 26, 2023, Colfidge was sentenced to 51 months in prison that will be followed by three years of supervised release. He was also ordered to forfeit $17 million and pay $2 million in restitution. His release date is scheduled for January 2027. All right, so he's still got another couple of years. Well, he was only sentenced to a little over four. Yeah, four years, three months. Yeah. Yeah, a little over four. Quick math. Yeah. He um, probably won't serve all of that. No. 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 I won't. I don't think most people ever serve most of their sentence. No. But I'm going to guess he's going to serve two years, and then he might have supervised release, but... Then he can get back to building that wall. Not, then he can get back to building the wall. Yep. And the We Build the Wall was ordered to pay back restitution to everybody, so... I don't know if those donors got their money back or not. Brian Colfidge may have sacrificed his legs and right arm for the sake of freedom, but it wouldn't keep him free. Colfidge is an example of how too much internet power can get into someone's brain and completely morph and shift the way that they operate. Colfidge was an incel with a wife, trolling people for the sake of trolling and ruining people's lives who had nothing to, who had done nothing to him. This power trip made him believe that he would could could and would and ended up deceiving people just to line his own pockets. He may have wanted to build a wall between the U.S. and Mexico, but now all Colfidge will see the next 51 months are the walls of a prison cell that he deserves to be behind. And that's the story of Brian Colfidge. That's the season 15 premiere. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, if you liked what you heard, there's more where that came from. Um, we are on Facebook at White Collars Red Hands. We are at facebook.com slash White Collars Red Hands. We're on Twitter or X at White Collars Pod. We are on Instagram at White Collars underscore Red Hands. We are on TikTok at White Collars Red Hands. Um, we're on YouTube at White Collars Red Hands. Uh, we highly suggest that if you want a free way to sponsor us, please follow us on YouTube. Give us a like. Um, hit that notification bell. Hit, hit that, yeah, hit that bell. Drop a like and subscribe. Let, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, another free way to help us is if you can go on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and give us a rating. We love a five star review, but we will also take an honest review. We sure will. And if, another great way to help us build not a wall, but to just grow our podcast is by telling a friend. Um, word of mouth is the best way to support somebody, share our stuff, um, all of the above. We would really, really, really appreciate that. Um, a not free way to support us is by going to our website, whitecollarsredhands.com, and clicking on the merch tab. I am repping my White Collars Red Hands tee. Or no, this isn't a t-shirt. This is a hoodie. I'm repping Mario. Yeah. Well, I'm repping our merch. This is a very soft hoodie. I've had it for years now, and it's still pretty darn soft. I'm That's not true. not gonna lie. I probably have had this what two, three years, something like that. Yeah, something. two and a half at least. Um, super soft, cuddly. I also have a mug that is not here with me today. Um, what else? What else? Oh, if you hear a white collar crime story and you like it and you want us to cover it just shoot that over to us you can do that via email at white collars red hands at gmail.com or you can dm us on any of our socials we will see it and we will try to cover it for next season is there anything else you know what i think uh, i think that's it all right i think we covered it well thank you for listening and we will see you next time on another episode of white collars red, red hands, hands.